Hello and uh, welcome. Well, sometimes uh, the ministers and members of the leadership team have to go into St Albans Church to record services or parts of the services before they're streamed on the website and on YouTube. And obviously it's lovely to be privileged to be back in a place of worship in lockdown, even when there's only two of you there. And it's lovely to feel the church around you. But it's also very strange. It doesn't feel quite right. It feels somehow in a, that the whole building is waiting for the believers to return, to fill it with praise and song, fill it with communion, and fill it with fellowship and a sense of mission. And on a quiet winter afternoon, as you wait between takes for the recording, a sense almost of lostness can enter in. The choir stalls and the lectern at times, made of very fine wood as they are, creak and groan. They contract and expand in the heat. It's a strange place, but a wonderful place. Because if you still yourself and attune yourself to the presence of God, it becomes palpable there in a different way. And we hope and we pray that we will all be able to enjoy that and share that together. Not many weeks from now. The poem from Catherine Charlie that we're going to read at the end of this thought starts with an experience just like that. Obviously, it was written uh, years before the current pandemic, but it starts with an encounter in a very ordinary church, a parish church, not a grand cathedral. It may be beautiful inside, it may not be. We don't know. It may be in a town, or it may be like this one, in quite a remote and an accessible location. But for the purposes of our thought, it is any church. There are signs of glory, the holy table, crosses, flowers, signs of God's love, signs of the presence of Christ. And yet it might also be cold. The sunlight might be wintry. The old service books, the old notices, the expired electoral roll, Perhaps some children's work from Christmas even, in the corner, speaks of an emptiness and a loss, in spite of the ordinariness and in spite of the sight of the holy. It's mixed, very mixed. Lent is where we are entering a church, a bit like this one. Lent is an entering into a space that at once seems very much like the space it always has been, but is somehow changed by a sense that we're entering into a solidarity, a journeying with Jesus in the time of temptation, in the time of trial, and in the time of denial. It's a space shaped by the ordinary and the extraordinary 
at one and the same time. The days around us now have an ordinariness to them. Our home, the food we eat, perhaps what we watch on the television. But there's still a really Lenten experience of something being missing. Things can be very hard going in prayer, which is one of the reasons why it's terrific to have uh, the School of Prayer, which we're starting in Lent. Prayer can seem in Lent especially distant, especially hard. Meditating on the things of God can be a bit of a tough call. And yet, and yet, transformation in the ordinary is possible. It's possible if we're given the grace to wait in prayer, wait in the ordinary, wait in the absence. Things are the same, but almost like a coiled spring of glory, they're ready for renewal. Despite the oncoming shape of Christ's passion and death, and the current shape of loss and aloneness, the light is somehow shining behind. The writer to the book of Revelation, of the book of Revelation, uh, St. John the Presbyter, was given a vision of an encounter of glory in such a time as this. Where all has been made new. God never says, I will make all new things. God says, I will make all things new. Listen to this passage from Revelation chapter 21. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, to the thirsty. I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Let's hear the poem. Lord, in these hard pews where wood and sunlight meet, and prayer books lie, dusty, untouched, and a few flowers droop. I find your peace. It is the peace of centuries of wood and stone, stumbling devotions, and hymns to the unknown. There is nothing of grandeur here, only the peace of the ordinary transformed.